In this video, I'm going to walk through problems 39 and 40 on the chapter 2 exam review. So 39 and 40 are both our linear model type questions uh, from section 2.8 that we discussed, and we will use these models to answer questions and ultimately graph it. So number 39, Simon opens a savings account with $325 and he deposits $35 per week with no withdrawals. So basically what's going on is he's um, put a little money in an account and he's going to add to it and add to it and add to it forever and ever and ever. So no withdrawals and we don't have any information about when he's going to stop. So write a linear model that represents the amount of money and we're going to use A for the account and W for weeks. Okay. So the amount of money in the account is going to be our dependent variable because it depends on how many weeks have gone by and the weeks will be our independent variable okay so when we start with y equals mx plus b first of all we know we can exchange the y which is our dependent variable for the letter a and we know we can exchange x which is the independent variable with our w for weeks but what will we fill in the rest of this stuff? Well, the $325, that's the starting place. So that's typically going to be our y-intercept. So I'll put a b right there. And if you deposit 35 per week, this is our rate of change. So this is our slope. So that's going to be our m. So with all of this information that we've just gleaned, we can say that a, the account balance, equals the slope $35 per week times the number of weeks plus our starting value where we initially inserted or initially deposited money is 325 so right there is my linear model that I can use okay so part B will say what will be the balance of Simon savings account after one year and then we're going to use 52 weeks for that one year. Okay, well we're going to start A equals 35W plus 325. And uh, we want to know what will the account balance be. So we're looking for A. A will be $35 per week times 52 weeks. And then we'll add that to the starting value of $325. Okay, now when I multiply these guys together, I should get something like 1820 plus 325. So my account balance will be 2145. But what is it? What are these units? What is it that we're talking about? We're talking about account balance, so we're talking about money. So we're going to put our dollar sign right there. Okay, so there's the, the answer for B. What will the account balance be after one year? Well, it'll be just over $2,000, $2,145. Okay, part C talks about how many weeks will it take Simon's account to reach $1,375. So if we start with our A equals 35W plus 325, we're looking for weeks. How many weeks? That means we have to have a value for A, which we do, $1,375. So 1375 equals 35W plus 325. Well, we can subtract 325 from both sides. And this 35W over here will be by itself. And then over here we should get something like 1050. Okay, so when we divide both sides by 35, those cancel. And our W looks like it's going to be 30. But 30 what? Well, since it's W, it's the number of weeks. So the answer for this one is going to be 30 weeks. So there's the answer for C. In part D, we're going to use this linear model that we wrote in part A, and we're going to go ahead and graph it. So we have this uh, nice graph grid here, and there should be 15 by 15. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So typically the, the values that we're going to use should hopefully be multiples of 15, but we'll see how it works out. So we could say, let's see, our x-axis here 
had to do with our independent variable, which we said was w, weeks. So I'm going to put a w right there, and this is number of weeks. Okay? Likewise, our y axis was the account up here, or we can say account balance. And that's going to be our y axis, or in our case, the a axis. Okay, so the number of weeks, we know one of the questions was, um, let's see, after one year, that's 52 weeks. We could go a little further than that if we wanted to. Um, let's just go 75 weeks, just for giggles. And I know that 75 is divisible by 15, five times. So this would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and then we have 75 right there, which is the end. Okay, so how about our account balance? So we know we'll always start at zero down here. I wonder what if we have our account balance? We know that he's going to have just over $2,000 after a year, so 52 weeks. So probably we could go to $3,000 at the top here. So $3,000. Also, I know 3,000 is divisible by 15, so this will work nicely. So that means that if we come down one, two, three, four, five lines, this will be $2,000. And one, two, three, four, five more lines will be $1,000. So one, two, three, four, five should be our zero dollars. So this works out real nice. So each one of these will be $200. So $200. 400, 600, 800. And I'll put a little dollar sign out front so we know. Okay, so now that we've got our axes wrapped up here, what was the starting amount? So we started at $325, right? So at zero weeks, he had $325, which would be just over half, because half of this would be $300. So we're going to go just over that, so $325. I also know at the 52 weeks, so which would be something like right here, at 52 weeks he had 2145. So at 52 weeks, he's going to have 2145. So this is going to be a little difficult. We know this line is $2,200, so 2,000, 2,200. So it's going to be almost at the top of that. This is 50 weeks, this is 55 weeks, so it's going to be about right there. I would say probably a good right there would be $2,145 at 52 weeks. Okay? Our other one was at 30 weeks, that's much easier to do, because it's right on the line. And it'll be 1,375. So here's 1,000, 1,200, 1,400, just below that, so 1,375. So we've got three points here plotted so I'm gonna get my little note card that I've been using to draw our lines okay so I've drawn a line notice I will not put an arrow on this side because it's starting right there it doesn't continue forever but I will put an arrow on this side because it does continue forever there so in general this is what this is gonna look like so I could use this graph to answer more questions about how about at 20 weeks, how much is he going to have? And we could work it up at 20 weeks. Looks like he's going to have just over $1,000 after 20 weeks. So you can use this graph to extrapolate some more information and not just graph it and be done with it. So there is part D, and that's the end of number 39. In number 40, we have Mr. Philip, and he's on a diet. He currently weighs 300 pounds and uh, he loses eight pounds per month, okay? So we're working on writing a linear model that represents Mr. Phillips' weight, W, after M months. So we wanna know what his weight is. So that's gonna be our dependent variable. And the dependent variable is going to depend on how many months has gone by. So it depends on our independent variable. 
Okay, so when we do these, we always start y equals mx plus b, because this is a linear equation, a linear model. We know it's linear because it says he loses 8 pounds per month, so it's a constant change. Same thing every month. So our y can now be w for his weight. The m is the slope, so how is it changing? It changes, he loses 8 pounds per month. Since he's losing, that'll be a negative. So a negative 8. And our x is our independent variable, which will be m months. And then plus our starting value, and he starts at 300 pounds. So our model that we can use here is going to be the weight equals negative 8 times the number of months plus 300. So we have our slope and we have our starting value. So there's part A. Part B says, what will be Mr. Phillips' weight after one year? So we can write this model down, negative 8m plus 300, and we want to know his weight after one year. Well, one year is 12 months, right? So 12 months, and that'll equal our m. So we can put 12 right in there for m. So the weight equals negative 8 times 12 plus 300. Well, negative 8 times 12 is negative 96 plus 300. So it looks like our weight will be 204 pounds. Looks like he's going to lose almost 100 pounds that first year, which that would be pretty significant. He'd be like a whole different person. So you go, Mr. Phillips. Okay, part C says, how many months will it take Mr. Phillip to get his weight down to 228 pounds? <clears throat> okay, so the weight is the 228 pounds. So we'll start with our model. 228 pounds equals negative 8m plus 300. So we're looking for the number of months here. So we can subtract 300 from both sides. We'll be left with negative 8m, and it looks like it'll equal negative, what, 72? So we can divide by 8, negative 8 on both sides, and we should get m equals 9. And when we do that, what does that represent? 9 what? Well, it's m, and m is months, so it'll be 9 months. So it'll take 9 months for Mr. Phillip to get down to 228 pounds. Now in part D, we're going to go ahead and use that linear model that we wrote, and we're going to draw a graph. Okay, So our independent variable was our number of months, right? So m, so I'll put number of months right down there. And our dependent variable was his weight, so I'll put w, so I'll put weight over here in parentheses. Okay, so this is zero right here, zero pounds on this scale, and zero months on this scale. Since we can't lose weight for an extended period of time that radically, because eight pounds per month can only be done so long, let's just call this one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. We'll go fifteen months here. And you get the idea, you can go ahead and label all of them. So he starts up here at 300 pounds, and we know he's not going to go higher than that if he's losing weight. So I'll go 300 pounds down there, which I know is divisible by 15, and we have 15 little uh, row lines here that are in our grid. So I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This will be 200 pounds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 will be 100 pounds, and then down to 0 pounds. So here then would be 220, 240, 260, and 280, and you can fill in the rest as well. Okay, we know he starts at 300 pounds, so I'm going to go ahead and put my point right there at, at uh, 0, 300. Okay, I also know that after one year, 12 months, he's 204 pounds. So after 12 months, which would be right there, he's going to go up, 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 and he'll be just over 200. So 204 is what he'll be. So I'm going to go I'll squeak it right in there, 204 pounds. I also know from before that after 9 months, which is here, 
that he'll be 228 pounds. So 228 maybe looks just like there. Okay, so I've got some dots here, some uh, ordered pairs that I was able to get from answering those questions. So let's go ahead and, and graph this. We'll start here and we'll just take our line down just like that. So in general, this is what his weight is going to look like. So a graph is nice because then we could say, well, after four months right here, what do you think he's going to weigh? And I can see here after four months, he'll probably be just under 270 or so. So again, not only can you just look at this graph and graph a model, but you can actually answer questions based on the graph. So there is number 40, part D.